Welcome back to the Hollywood Redux Podcast. On today's episode, we're talking rings. Welcome back to the Hollywood Redux Podcast. I'm Katie. I'm Michael. I'm Matt, and we're coming to you from HollywoodRedux.com. And on today's episode, we are talking about the movie Rings. Uh, Numero trace. Yeah. Ring number three. Reboot. If you've never seen one of our reviews, be sure to uh, mind the spoilers that are coming ahead. We will spoil the hell out of this movie. If you uh, have not seen the movie, please turn this off and go watch it, unless you're one of those weirdos who likes spoilers. There you go. So here we go. Honestly, like, save your money. Listen to our review. Watch it when it pops up on on demand. That's the bottom line here, I think. (laughs) Yeah, I can agree Uh, with that. even, Even, I think... People who are real horror movie enthusiasts who are just looking for a good scare. Yeah, even if you're just going for that, I think it fails you. Yeah. yeah this Not feels... to start out super negative, but, like, I'd failed. The movie failed me, personally. You know, if, you know I categorize this movie right with where Bye Bye Man was yeah. for uh, the beginning of the year, where it's a movie that does a lot of setting up, and it just felt mm-hmm. like a movie that was checking off boxes. Like, horror oh, fans like this. Horror fans like this. Horror f- this is a scary yeah. situation. This is scary. But if you do not know how to make the situation scary, it's pointless. So yeah. they just had all these moments that had no stakes, had no real scares outside of like loud sound effects or something like that. You know, whereas the original rings, you know, even the Japanese version or the ones, you know, ring one and two, uh, those have moments of tension. Those have moments of yeah. like scary moments, you know. There are a lot of stakes at hand, you know, and this movie has none of that. And each day represented something. Like, one day you're pulling things out your your throat, and then another day you have a scar, and then... Yeah, I mean... What it, happened? It's they just like, kind of jumbled it all around. Yeah, it's kind of like they tried to reboot the franchise, and at the same time decided to be like, well, everybody who's seen the franchise knows what happens in these movies, so we're not going to do any of that. We're just going to, like, jump ahead and just, like try to throw you into the most non-interesting romantic relationship story of all time. Uh, I mean, I think, I think let's, I mean, let's start from the very beginning, like from a story perspective, I think the introduction was very confusing because there were a couple of scenes, not one, but not two, but like a number of, more than one sequences. Big opening numbers, yeah. Where there were these huge opening things that happened and then you move to the next Mm -hmm. thing and it's seemingly almost disconnected from the previous thing. And then you have finally a title card that says Rings and then the movie starts and it is seemingly, mostly, disconnected from the thing you saw before. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. What she just described is in the the trailers. There's a plane crash that happens Mm -hmm. and that is the opening scene. It's a plane crash where a guy explains he saw the movie and he has to survive for another five minutes while the plane's coming into land. All I got is another five minutes. It, all I need is another five minutes and of course he dies and the plane crashes and then we just cut to two years later and Amy T. Garden and the dude from uh, Big, the, Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory uh, who, dude, you make a million dollars an episode on Big <laughs> Bang Theory. What the fuck were you thinking being know, but, in this movie? But I, you know what? I loved his character, though. His character was so sleepy. Everything that his character said trailed off into, like, nothingness. Like, he would be responding some, to somebody and would just be like, yeah, and then the thing with the... It's like any he professor seemed, of a head. Just into oblivion. He would just sort of trail off as if he was falling asleep. The most acting he did was, like, right before he was dying. Like, he was like, <laughs> you know, whatever. But, like, the thing is, like, I felt like he knew what this movie was. Because if you look at his face throughout the entire performance, it's just kind of like, I don't want to fucking be here. It is. The whole attitude <laughs> like, was did you thing. get the whole take? was like, I don't want to do this. That it, wasn't yeah. just, it, I mean, it played for the character, but it also felt real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but honestly, he was the better one of the better actors that was in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, the two leads were, I'm sorry, just not very interesting. They were beautiful people. They were beautiful. Very They're pretty really people. Attractive. I mean. I'm going to miss your smell. Take my shirt off, Zac Efron style. I've got a full beard at 18. <laughs> I think I think the thing that failed for me, though, story-wise, is in the first Ring movie especially, and in the Japanese version this is also true, and maybe to a lesser extent the second one, but mainly in the first one, it was an artful movie, and the movie was really propelled by this very real family drama that was at the heart of the movie that Naomi Watts was this main character dealing with her family and how she was estranged from the father of her child. Her own child didn't really call her mom. Mm-hmm. You know, there were some weird well, elements there. Well, it was there. well developed. And, and yes. then and then the story about Samara, who was the ultimate abandoned, misunderstood child, like the ultimate epitome yeah. of that. And so Definitely. so you watch the, you know, the two stories really played off each other. In this one, the, the finally, the main character that we finally land on, Julia, 
has we don't know anything about her backstory. Phoebe Cates. We don't know any information <laughs> about from her. From the 80s. What, do, you know, if she even had like a relationship with her father that we knew that was like a tr you know a fraught relationship with uh -huh. her father, then that would make more sense for her to stumble into this to play this yeah. out for Samara and dealing with bad fathers who don't protect you, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, bring you into the world and then don't protect you. All these things. Then at least you would have gotten some kind of of meaningful something to the story. Yeah, like, the, in the first the movie, we had thing, meaning. There was meaning there. It was scary, but there was meaning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The only thing we knew about Julia's character was that she was staying in her hometown from going to college to take care of her mom. That's take care of her mom, literally who we thing. never see. Yeah, which means nothing. That's and then nothing. she left her. And then she gets it's a, jealous it's a as line fuck. Of dialogue. They didn't show <laughs> us. They didn't show us anything. They just yeah. told us that in a throwaway line. So yeah, and yeah. then they get jealous. And then she gets jealous as fuck and goes to this college, leaving her dying mother alone she's all alone in the middle we don't of even the night see it. we don't even see her decision to do that it was such a big deal for her to like stay and take care of her mom but then the decision to leave her mom and go off in this adventure she doesn't even mention her mom once on the adventure like oh my left my dying mom nope doesn't give a shit <laughs> like, hey, if you're a horror fan, you know that, like, oh, dying mother. Maybe the mom dies, or maybe you see the haunting of this mother throughout. Like, right, why yeah, wouldn't, like, any go. of the evil spirits throw her dying insane. mother in her face? Anything to give us anything scary that's not a fucking umbrella opening and camera or something would have been great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, you know, this movie, we could go all day about how many well, things this movie set up and did not set up. On. Okay, uh, but positives... But, uh, I love Vincent D'Onofrio <laughs> playing, I think, probably, like, the truest character to his nature, which is a blind, former priest, kidnapper, oh. like... Jesus. Oh no, God. but, like... You have a very poor opinion of Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> no, no, but, like, Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio, like, look at Vincent D'Onofrio's career. Look at the, like, characters that he has portrayed yeah. over his lifetime. And, like, yeah. just see where the where the bell curve hits and I guarantee you it's this person right here. Well, he was the other he was the only other actor to me throughout the entire thing. That him and then the uh the bed and, the bed and breakfast owner. Those three actors oh, were the only yeah. three actors acting in this movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Samara, who was the girl like crawling around contorting and doing all that. Samara? So, Samara? Yeah, he his, the father of the child, Samara. It's Samara, man. Clearly, it's did nobody want to correct correct Vincent D'Onofrio on set? Is that what it was? That take was good. It was. It was. It was literally a Hercules it. disappointed moment. I hope that clip played just now. Disappointed. That was better acting than most of this movie. But I mean, it was just a, you know, it was a, it was poorly directed. And the first thing that Michael said to me at the end of the movie was. I guess you can't fix everything in post. Yeah. And to be honest, this movie looks like they shot for like three days, four days, and then everything was done in post. There's so many just cuts and like, okay, well, our, movings, our movie isn't interesting enough, so let's just put glitches throughout it. And you know, also things just like, that. like spiraling shots of location. That was beautiful, but I mean, it just hung on those for so long in some cases, just a transition from, call it, from her hometown to the college she was going to, to save him yeah, and also weird, yeah. also sidebar i don't think they even understood the first movie and like how the <laughs> mythology of samara works at all because I, they don't for so many reasons but mainly because they rewrote it so that she can now like add things to the video and and, yeah. and it's a video and, within the video and what she adds they're like what she adds oh she's telling the story and that was never what it was that she, when Samara was showing you those images she wasn't showing you the story she was showing you like the worst possible things imaginable so that you could understand what was inside her like she was trying yeah. to show you this is what happened this is me this is my you're gonna be me now in the yeah. seven yeah. days and then you and die this, and the thing is it's like this movie also so did something even, like pay attention to their own movie. Yeah, yeah they didn't pay attention to no like the, yeah and and mm. Yeah, it was just it just didn't Sorry. make any sense because the real inciting event that should have happened in this movie was at the end of the movie. There was a, so like there was the thing that should have happened if you guys are giving away <laughs> quick times like you just have to copy a quick Dude. time and yeah, give that to somebody. That's what the rules then why are didn't the evil spirit seriously just start emailing everybody like it did at the end of the movie anyway? 
the, the, like that's in the I'm beginning, like, yeah. could have killed anybody it wanted to. The rules are all over the place. The so she copied her this like essence. She was magically able to copy herself into a videotape, and then you digitize the videotape, and you can email the QuickTime, and that's the same. And it it's just like I don't know if that's how magic. Like I don't think that's how planes work. I don't think that's how the <laughs> internet works. I don't think that's how magic works. Well, like, I, just I don't think rings. Anything in this movie. I think a perfect example to add on to that list of things that don't work. Rings does not work. Uh, in my honest opinion, <laughs> Rings was pretty bad. Um, what's what's as, one positive thing we can say? What's one less positive thing? It can had say? an ending. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm a big horror movie fan. Yeah. Everybody knows this that knows me. I've watched everything. And to me, this is just one of those movies that a studio said, what are the boxes we can check off to say that we had these yeah. things in the movie? Um, and they didn't understand the origin, the story itself, or how to tell a horror movie. Unfortunately, because and I don't know if it was a lot of the studio hands being involved with the creative process or if the creative people just didn't know what they wanted to make. But this movie just did, constantly did not know what it wanted, constantly set up scares that fell flat, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said in our Bye Bye Man review, it was the same thing in Bye Bye Man. It was literally just a formula film that had no like substance. gravitas yeah. and substance yeah, it didn't to it. Have anything to say because but, you didn't care about anybody, well, and that's a problem in a horror movie. You need was, to care about your character. I was worried about. Like uh, Julia's mother the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Julia wasn't. No, Julia was not. what I was going to say is that I was more interested in the uh, very brief foray the movie took into Johnny Galecki's little like bar club world of the people who share the video, the sevens or whatever. Yeah. I was like, what is this? This is like a CW. <laughs> yeah. Well, right the whole here. thing felt but, like the CW was doing the ring. They just, it was so brief. It was like, oh, and by the way, there's a whole uh, Samara death cult and we're done. And it was like, what? I, yeah. I actually am interested just, in that. Those also, people. And the cops were showing up to people? interview him and then he just goes back. He just like drove out for the night and then what? came back the next day and cleared out his office. Like what happened? no, nothing happened with the cops. Like, oh, he, oh, yeah, was he was investigated bizarre. at all? Another really setup. Can't. So you start pulling the threads and you're like, but wait a minute, then there was this other scene that led nowhere. Then there was this other scene that led yeah. me nowhere. Yeah, that was kind of the, that sums up the plot of this movie. Those are the rings. That's, uh, the, that's the joke. The, the if you want to see a... Rebirth. Yeah, Rebirth and Braille on her hand. Oh, uh, anyway. There's enough. To the ring, if you want to see a great ring movie, see the original or the Japanese Ringu or see the the American first one. This is pretty rough. Save your money. Wait for it to come out in free in six months because it'll be out on Netflix. I guarantee it. Um, make chances are Netflix might not even buy this one. They might just uh, let Amazon pick it up. So uh, let us know what you think of our review Ouch. in the comments <laughs> below. Uh, if you uh, like the movie and you think we're full of crap, let us know as well. Oh, please. Uh, yes. I'm, no, I would love to hear that perspective. Different opinions? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to hear that perspective. It's a community for all of us uh, who love making movies and watching movies. Uh, like if you thought there was something of value in it, like I would love to try and also yeah. find something of value in yeah. it. Yeah, tell cool. us. Yes, we'd like to know. <laughs> uh, but for the Hollywood Redux podcast, that's going to do it for us this week. My name is Matt. You can find me on social media at Splashdown1. And I'm Michael. I'm at What the Hess. I'm Katie. I'm at K. Moles. Yes. And we are coming to you from HollywoodRedux.com. All right, guys. Check right. us out next time. We're going to be talking about John Wick 2. Chapter 2, dude. Bye. Chapter 2. Thanks for watching. Deuces. I know you will. Oh, hey. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Check out below for more. Or you can follow us on social media right over there. Or hey, while you're at it, check out our store at RedoxGear.com for plenty of cool shirts. And subscribe for plenty more content just like this. See you later.